I think there's a huge, you know, sea change in the way that uh, HIV and ID docs are are thinking about hepatitis C now that they're um, you know they're starting to own it themselves and and treat. So um, all of our colleagues in the HIV world are, are are developing a keen interest as as you can see from today's program at the HIV meeting. It's virtually all hepatitis. Uh, you know, today. So I think that's, you know, people are sitting up and taking notice that the field is moving incredibly rapidly and um, that they're not just, um, you know, the uh, domain of, um, of GI or liver doctors anymore. There was once a time when treatment of HIV was also neglected and thought to be of irrelevant clinical value and therefore um, most people uh, didn't engage uh, in aggressive treatment. And then the astonishing effectiveness of heart was evident and that was no longer a tolerable attitude or practice. And I think we're transitioning uh, quickly into that era for hepatitis C and reminding people of that sometimes helps them get it. But you know, HIV drug development was sort of slow and steady, one or two drugs a year. This hepatitis C drug development is like HIV drug development at warp speed. It, it's really going enormously rapidly with multiple drugs. I think there's an obligation on the researchers in these two trials to ensure that the final study reports get published in a peer-reviewed journal, in addition to provide these data to those writing guidelines. As you know, guidelines are very influential in the HIV uh, field, and I think that uh, having these data at this meeting provide critical information to formulate those guidelines, and at least in my view, <coughs> recommendations to incorporate HCV protein inhibitors will be a lot stronger with the availability of SVR12 than they were uh, just last week. And these truly are cutting edge data. These are, these are new results where the patients are just accumulating these data within the last uh, month or so. So these are, these are new data that we're really thrilled to be sharing with the, the treaters and with this audience. Yeah, you know, the guidelines will help enormously getting the payors to step up to the plate and, uh, and pay for protease inhibitors in, uh, in HIV patients. So I think we should lobby strongly for rapid changes, rapid updates in the guidelines in based the, on these data. The last time we discussed these, for example, at CROI last year, there was concern that these on-treatment responses that were quite good might result in virologic relapse. And I think what we're both saying today for these protease studies is that the vast majority of patients who responded on therapy sustained their virologic response and achieved a cure. So we didn't have that information within the last year, now we do. For me, that's a major shift in terms of the strength of the evidence to use these drugs. <coughs> People were also worried about the adverse events in the HIV patients, and honestly, I mean, you know, in, you know from the clinic, it's actually a little bit less, you know, you know, the, you know in terms of subjective, but uh, in the, on the data, in the face of the data, it's, it's, it's virtually exactly the same as it is in the hep C mono-infected patients. Uh, so adverse events are really the same. Uh, so that's not an obstacle to treatment either. Of course, you, Ed, your drug has no adverse events. Uh, I think the, the electron data, it's phase two, uh, but the, the current uh, phase three program, which is now well underway, uh, should establish that interferon-free treatment uh, is, is not a dream, it's a reality, and I think it will be here within the next five years. Yeah. We'll see. And perhaps to expand on that and, and taking uh, Dave Thomas's HIV comparison, I think we're at a time, much like we were in HIV, where we look at the need for therapy. For HIV, that's the CD4 cell count, and we, we ask the question, does this patient need treatment based on their CD4? Well, if you take the analogy to hepatitis C, it's asking the question, does this patient need treatment today based on liver disease? Unfortunately, it's not so easy to measure liver disease in hepatitis C. You've got to resort to liver biopsy or other markers. But I think we are at that transition period where patients who need treatment based on disease stage should get it today. And then I think uh, Ed Gaines' data and additional data for these interferon-free regimens suggest that perhaps others may be able to wait. But that will be, I think, the art of hepatitis C treatment in the HIV-infected patient for the next several years. Um, we are making that transition, I think. We're not there yet to the point where treatment for hepatitis C is easy, but we are at the point where it's more effective.